As a satanic wave sweeps across the West, millions of people are scouring the scriptures in a desperate search for direction and answers. In today's episode, we help you avoid a tricky theological trap. The latest news, history, and analysis from the perspective of the first Christians. Tune into the FBN Worldwide 24 7 radio stream. Stripping away 2,000 years of false doctrine isn't easy, but we've had lots of coffee. Now your host, Darren Kalama. With the governments and institutions of the Western world firmly in the grip of Satan's parasites, each day brings word of a new abomination and celebration of perversion. And Christians are struggling to make sense of it by turning to preachers and by opening up their Bible to see what fits, what seems to fit to explain what's going on around us. Now, as children of God, we're naturally inquisitive and solution-oriented. We want to fix the problem. We want to stop the satanic wave that appears to be engulfing everything around us. Maybe the modern Bible with two different religions stapled together has the answer for us somewhere in its pages. Not in the New Testament? Well, let's look at somebody else's religion in the Old Testament for a clue. And after much searching and listening to the TV preachers, two obvious examples appear to be what people have settled on. Make current events fit within the rehashed Daniel prophecies of Revelation or by turning to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 11. You see, it's what the TV preachers are raving about today. Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 11 seems to go a long way in explaining what's going on in the world right now. All the pieces seem to fit. People are acting crazy all around us, and this verse looks like it describes perfectly what happened. Let's read it together. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Wow, that's some pretty powerful stuff there. But you know what? I don't think my voice does justice to this verse. It doesn't give it the weight and gravitas that it really deserves. So let's get in the moment. Let's listen to Max McLean read the King James Version with that authoritative British accent that he has. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Oh, that was good. Pretty heavy. Let's let that sink in and marinate in its royal intonations and inflection. Here it is again. God shall send them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Huh. Hand in glove. Key in lock. It looks like the perfect explanation. People all around us are believing lies and going along with Whatever nonsense and fairy tales the monopolized media are telling them to believe. Every week it's a new lie, and they just go along with it unquestioningly. And not only do they believe it, they get emotional and attack anyone around them that professes to doubt or questions the latest lies. Almost like, oh, I don't know, like they're possessed or something. It's actually disturbing to watch how far gone some of these people are. And here comes along 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 11, explaining it all to us, telling us that it is in fact God that has sent them a delusion, making them believe all these lies. God himself is making them do it. Well, this must be what's happening. Now we finally have the answer. <laughs> yeah, no, we have the wrong answer. In fact, we have no answer because there is no verse 11 in the first Christian Bible of 144 AD. And nowhere in that Bible is the word delusion. You see, it's just another example of the editing and creative license used to change the gospel of the Lord and Paul's original epistles when they started churning out the modern Bible in 382 AD. This, of course, was just 50 years after they stapled the Hebrew Torah to it in 325 AD at the Council of Nicaea, and then renamed it to the Old Testament, setting the stage for thousands of years of confusion and, dare I say, delusion. But let's not get lost in the weeds. Let's stay focused on this verse. 
because we have the first Bible, we can easily see what's been edited, added, or removed from the original when we read the modern Bible. So solving this mystery was pretty easy. The verse was simply not there. And in a minute, you'll understand why it would be impossible for that verse to exist in the pre-Nicene Bible in the first place. You see, I knew it wouldn't be there before I even looked. And it's a skill you'll also learn as you become more familiar with the first Bible and its original Christian canon when you reconnect with the pre-Nicene faith. It's a skill that makes it very difficult for the Jesus killers to deceive and trick you. You see, when you're in a confusing room full of mirrors, break the mirrors. Let's read it again. God shall send them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Now, whenever you see a verse that attributes malign human intention to our Christian God, you can be assured it was edited in by the Judaizers. We've done dozens of episodes pointing out specifically where and how they did it. Galatians 4.4 is one of my other favorite examples of their word games and sophistry. Our God, revealed to us only through Jesus Christ, would not seek to delude you and make you believe in lies. You see, that's something that the Hebrew deity does, tricking and lying to his own people. Their Bible, what they call the Torah, is filled to the gills with examples of their deity lying to them, double dealing on them and killing them. That's not our Christian God, not my book, not my God. And whoever their deity is, he sure sounds a lot like Satan. But I'll let them explain it to you because it's not my religion and, frankly, it's not my problem. In fact, this verse 11 fever dream quote is in direct contradiction of Scripture. 1 Corinthians 14.23 For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. There you have it. End of discussion end of debate. It's crystal clear. God does not delude people and make them believe lies. That's what Satan does. That's what the deity in the Old Testament does. In fact, even in the modern Bible itself, we see how this Judaized delusion verse is, again, directly contradicted, this time in John 1, 5. Quote, unquote, God is light, and in him is no darkness at all, unquote. Here, have another contradiction, this one from Isaiah 45, 7. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord Yahweh, do all these things. <laughs> well, you can't have it both ways. Jesus and Satan can't both be your God. And if they are, you either need psychiatric help or an exorcism. These bizarre, contradictory, and psychotic verses do not exist in the original Christian Bible but they do exist in the modern Bible because that modern Bible stapled two completely different religions together. And when you do that, the only end result you can possibly have is contradiction and confusion. Think about it this way. The same exact thing would happen if you stapled the Quran or Buddhism to the New Testament. And when people said the Bible created from that didn't make any sense, you would say to them, well, it's the mystery of faith. Well, no, it's not the mystery of faith. It's Judaizers stapling two different religions together. This is not complicated, and it's why the modern Bible is filled with contradictory nonsense. Are you starting to see it now, the picture coming into focus a little? Some people need to stay with the milk. They're not ready for the meat yet. And by the way, if you want the quick backstory on what they did in Thessalonians, they simply inverted and did a mix and match on chapters 1 and 2 and then added the extra verse. You see, that's why good propaganda is 99% truth. The goal is to sneak in that 1% lie. And when it comes to lying, Satan's parasites are unequaled. These are congenital liars that do not know truth, nor have they ever known it. Lying is genetically fused to their DNA by their father, the father of lies, Satan himself. And they're not just liars, they're blinded liars, as we read in 2 Corinthians 3, 9-12. through Seeing then that we have such hope, we use great plainness of speech, and not as Moses, 
which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. But their minds were blinded, for until this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. But even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. So now we know what isn't scripture as written by Paul. So let's take a look at what he did say about confusion and being blinded. As we read this, I want you to be cognizant of a couple things. Paul talks about a deity of this world and how it blinds people and causes delusions just like we see today. And this is as close as Paul gets to giving you spiritual meat instead of milk. Let's read it from 2 Corinthians 4, 1 through 2. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Unquote. Think about that very carefully. The God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Well, guess what? He's talking about Satan. Now think harder. What was the goal of the Judaizers when they added verse 11 and told you our Christian God was deluding people and making them believe a lie? Do you see the deception now? See how they try and replace their deity with our God, making them, I don't know, interchangeable, trying to make them the same, trying to blend oil and water, trying to blend the deity of the Old Testament with the Christian God of the New? It's theological alchemy, a confusing room filled with mirrors. Second Thessalonians 2.11 of the modern Bible is simply the satanic inversion of 2 Corinthians 4, 1 through 2 of the original Bible. And yes, there are millions of blinded and delusional people in the world right now who believe all manner of lies. But they were deluded by Satan, not by God. And by the way, the historical figure who spent a lifetime pointing out these contradictions was named Marcion of Sinope from the region of Pontus and his best-known book was titled Antithesis. But unfortunately, you can't read it because every copy on the planet was hunted down and burned by two different Roman emperors. What little we do know of him is because the books of his enemies like Tertullian, in which he was quoted, did survive. Now, if you'd like to learn a little bit more about him and the First New Testament before it was edited, I recommend a book by the same name called The First New Testament by Professor Jason Badoon. I'll add a link in the show notes for it. Remember, all presbyters of the Marcionite Christian Church are taught the skill of discernment, as you've seen in this episode, and they learn to use the First Bible of 144 AD to guide their flock through these valleys of confusion. And you can get your own free copy of the pre-Nicene Bible, the same one that they use, at the very first Bible.org.org. I'll have a link in the show notes to help you also find a Marcionite meeting house in your area in case you're interested. I need to switch gears here now with a few housekeeping notes. Next week, the Marcionite Church will be announcing a change in fiscal policy that's being made to help protect its parishioners. Now, as some of you know, they've been warning the flock to get out of the cities and remove their children from public schools. In fact, they've been strongly recommending that you disconnect from the Western system, which is firmly in the control of Satan's parasites. And that includes disconnecting from their financial system, a system that will be used as a weapon to track and punish you even more than it is currently. Leading by example is always the best way to lead. So beginning now, the church will no longer accept donations and support in the form of dollar-denominated fiat. Now that includes credit cards and bank transfer transactions. First Bible Network is also heeding the advice of the church, and we've removed dollar-denominated donation options from our website. 
From now on, donations and support will only be possible with decentralized Bitcoin Lightning, which allows you to remain anonymous and untracked by the hijacked governments which have declared war on Christians. And regardless of your religious denomination, you should urge your church to protect you in a similar way. May God's Holy Spirit and the wisdom of Jesus Christ find and guide you during this attack on our faith. Thanks for listening. I'm Darren Kalama for First News on FBN. Kill them all, old and young, girls and women, and little children. Does that sound like something Jesus would ever say to you? The first Christians didn't think so either. And that's why you won't find the Old Testament in the first Christian Bible of 144 AD. Reconnect with your pre-Nicene Christian roots and the Bible you were meant to have. Ten books and the Gospel of the Lord. Download your free ebook at theveryfirstbible.org.